So we <coughs> continue our discussion on the multivariate normal distribution and its properties. We have seen various characterizing properties which also helped us in uh, giving an alternative definition of the multivariate normal distribution. Uh, now we are trying to see its uh, connections with chi square distribution as in the case of uh, univariate normal distribution. For that purpose I stated uh, fisher cochran theorem and another lemma which is saying that y prime a y will have a chi square k distribution. So, this is giving a uh, necessary and sufficient condition <coughs> that if we are having a standard normal random variables, then if I consider y prime a y that is a quadratic form, this will have chi square k. We know that y prime y has a chi square k, but if I consider any a here, then for idempotent matrix this will be true. Now, let us consider further uh, results on this. The next result is that if x has a n p mu sigma distribution, then let us consider say q that is equal to x minus mu transpose a x minus mu, then that follows chi square k this is if and only if sigma a sigma a minus a sigma is null. And in this case you will have k is equal to trace of a sigma. Let us look at the proof of this. So, we can write x minus mu is equal to some b z. If you remember the representation that I obtained for uh, necessary and sufficient condition for the multivariate normal distribution, we were able to write a multivariate normal as mu plus b z, where z is a vector consisting of the standard normal independent random variables of dimension m. So, let us consider the decomposition of sigma as b b transpose rank of b is say m which is also the rank of sigma and the quadratic form q that is x minus mu prime a x minus mu. So, since x minus mu is uh, b z this becomes z prime b prime a b z that we can write as z prime and this b prime a b we can write as some matrix c. Now, if we implement this result that if I am having a collection of standard normal random variables, then y prime a y has a chi square k if and only if a is idempotent. So, that condition will be applied to c and also the trace and uh, rank of a will be equal to k here. So, if we apply this result, q will follow chi square k if and only if c is idempotent and k is equal to trace of c that is rank of c. Now, c is idempotent this condition is equivalent to so, c is equal to b prime a b. So, b prime a b is idempotent. So, this you can write as b prime a b into b prime a b is equal to b prime a b. So, I bring it to the left hand side. So, we can write as a b b prime a minus a b is equal to a null matrix. Now, b b prime is sigma. So, this becomes b prime a sigma a minus a b 
is equal to null matrix. Again this is equivalent to I can pre multiply by B and I can post multiply by B prime. This is equivalent. Now the question is that why is this equivalent? Because if I am having this I can consider here a transformation from here to get this thing here. So, this will be implying C sigma A sigma A minus A sigma is equal to null. Now, K is equal to trace of C that is equal to trace of B prime A B that is equal to trace of A B B prime because trace of some uh, matrix C into D is same as trace of D into C. So, trace of A sigma. Now, as a remark let me mention here if sigma is non singular then I can multiply by sigma inverse and sigma inverse here then this condition is A sigma A is equal to A. In that way actually you can say that A is a uh, sigma is a generalized uh, inverse of A that condition will be there. Now before going to uh, we will also discuss in detail the non central chi square distribution. However, let me talk about certain characterizations of the multivariate normal distribution now. Some characterizations of multivariate normal distribution. Let us consider let x1 and x2 be independent p dimensional random vectors such that x is equal to x1 plus x2 follows n p then x 1 and x 2 are also n p. Let us look at the proof of this let us consider say a linear combination of the components of x. So, that is becoming l prime x 1 plus l prime x 2. Now, since x 1 and x 2 are independent, l prime x 1 and l prime x 2 are also independent. Now, there is a characterization of the univariate normal distribution in terms of the decomposed terms. That means, if I say x 1 and x 2 are univariate normal such that x 1 plus x 2 follows univariate normal, then each of x 1 and x 2 will be univariate normal. So, from this we conclude that from the known characterization of we can say that L prime x 1 and L prime x 2 are univariate normal. Now, this L I chose arbitrarily 
of p dimension since l belongs to rp is arbitrarily chosen we can conclude that x1 and x2 are np distributed random vectors a second characterization is a generalization of uh, this which let me state in the full form here let x1 x2 xn be p dimensional independent random vectors let us consider say y1 equal to a linear combination of say b i x i i is equal to 1 to n and y2 as a linear combination of another linear combination of the same where b i s and c i s they are scalars let us consider say b as b1 b2 bn and c as say c1 c2 cn then we have the following that is x i s r i i d n p and b prime c is equal to 0 implies y 1 and y 2 are independent and secondly x <coughs> y 1 and y 2 are independent implies that x i will follow n p for any i such that b i c i is not 0 and x i is need not be identically distributed. Let us look at the proof of this. So, we can consider the vector y1, y2, let us call it say y. I put them in the two dimensional form here. So, this is now 2 p dimensional. So, v is 2 p dimensional. if i consider linear combination of uh, say t prime y then that will become say t1 prime y1 plus t2 prime y2 where t is equal to t1 t2 if i am assuming that x i s are independent random vectors. So, in the second uh, in the first part if I am assuming that x i s are multivariate normal then these are linear combinations of the because what I have done here y 1 is a linear combination of x i s. So, this is becoming t 1 prime sigma b i x i plus t 2 prime sigma c i x i that is equal to sigma b i t 1 prime plus sigma plus c i t 2 prime x i. So, this is linear combination of components of x i. So, t prime y 
will be univariate normal. So, this is for any t, this is uh, 2 p dimensional. So, y has n 2 p distribution that is 2 p dimensional multivariate normal distribution. Now, let us consider covariance matrix between y 1 and y 2. Now, that will be equal to because I have written this as b prime x see basically what we are getting here is covariance between y 1 and y 2 will become covariance between sigma b i x i and sigma c i x i that will consist of since x i's are independent this will reduce to b 1 c 1 the dispersion matrix of x 1 plus b 2 c 2 dispersion matrix of x 2 plus b p uh, I am taking n here b n c n dispersion matrix of x n as we have assumed covariance terms between x 1 x i x j for i not equal to j they will be null. So, this is nothing but b prime c sigma if we are writing dispersion matrix of x i is equal to sigma then this is equal to this. Now, if I am assuming here that b prime c is equal to 0 then this is simply equal to null. So, we will get y 1 and y 2 are independent. So, this result is proved that if x i s are independent and identically distributed p dimensional multivariate normal distributions where b 1 c 1 plus b 2 c 2 plus b n c n they are 0 then this y 1 and y 2 are independent. In particular you may consider something like this for example, I take say x 1 minus x 2 and x 1 plus x 2. So, then they will be independent. Suppose, I consider say 2 x 1 minus x 2 plus x 3 and say I take x 2 minus x 2 plus x 3 then they are also independent because if I consider here 2 into 0 minus 1 plus 1 1 into 1. So, that will is going to be 0. If I consider say x 1 plus x 2 plus x 3 and I consider say minus 2 x 1 plus x 2 plus x 3 then here the product is minus 2 plus 1 plus 1. So, they are also independent. So, like that we can construct independent linear combinations here. Let us look at the part B of this. In the second part what we are saying is that if y 1 y 2 are independent then x i s must be n p here for any this thing. So, let us look at this. So, we can make use of this is called actually Darmoy Iskitovic theorem. Let x 1, x 2, x n be independent
univariate random variables then sigma b i x i i is equal to 1 to n and sigma c i x i i is equal to 1 to n are independent it implies that x i will follow normal 1 if b i c i is not 0 and can be arbitrarily distributed otherwise for i is equal to 1 to n. So, let us consider say L prime y 1. So, that is equal to sigma b i L prime x i and similarly L prime y 2 is equal to sigma c i L prime x i. On this apply the Darmois Skitovic theorem, then L prime x i this will follow n 1 if b i c i is not 0. So, L is arbitrary vector in p dimensional space. We conclude that x i is will follow n p if b i c i is not 0. Now, this is if you look at the statement this is again very powerful statement what we are saying is that if I construct linear combinations of p dimensional random vectors and if they are independent then each of the terms in the linear combination will have a p dimensional normal distribution of course we are putting a condition here that bi ci must be non zero that means the corresponding term should be there a third characterization is based on the decomposition that I obtained and that we gave as an alternative definition of the multivariate normal distribution also. So, let us consider say y is equal to mu 1 plus say b 1 z let us call it z 1 and say y is equal to mu 2 plus b 2 z 2. Suppose, these be two representations of a p dimensional random vector in terms of say vectors z 1 and z 2 of non degenerate independent random variables. And uh, this uh, B 1 is a P by M matrix, B 2 is P by M matrix, rank of b 1 is m and rank of b 2 is also m. We also assume that no column of b 1 is a multiple of some column of b 2. Then y follows n p. So, now you see here I am actually using the representation that I gave in the 
as an alternative definition of the multivariate normal distribution, but in that one z 1 and z 2 were a vector of i i d standard normal variables. Here I am saying is that this is a vector of simply non degenerate uh, random variables independent random variables and then just by putting a condition on b 1 b 2 we are getting that y must have a multivariate normal distribution. So, this is also a very powerful characterization of a multivariate normal distribution. Let us consider say m is equal to p, then b 1 and b 2 are non singular and then we can write b 1 as b 2 b 2 inverse b 1 that we can write as say b 2 and some matrix this term we can write as some q. Let us assume say m is less than p. Let c be a vector which is orthogonal to columns of b 1 say and we write here c prime y that is equal to c prime mu 1 plus b 1 z 1 then that is becoming c prime mu 1 plus c prime b 1 z 1. Now, this will become 0. So, this is simply mu prime c prime mu 1 here. Now, that is equal to c prime mu 2 plus c prime b 2 z 2. Now, what I am getting here? c prime b 2 z 2 is equal to now this is a scalar this is a scalar. So, we are getting that c prime b 2 z 2 is a degenerate random variable. Now, we assumed that this z 1 and z 2 are vectors of non degenerate independent random variables. So, here I am getting this as a degenerate random variable. So, this is contradicts our assumption. Unless we have c prime b 2 is equal to 0. Now, if c prime b 2 is equal to 0, c prime b 2 is equal to 0 is equivalent to saying that c is orthogonal to columns of b 2. Now, let us look at this. I started with c to be a vector which is orthogonal to the columns of b 1 and I am able to prove that c is now orthogonal to the columns of b 2. So, this means that column space the orthogonal column space of say b 1 is a subspace of orthogonal column space of b 2. Now, in this derivation I have taken b 1 b 2. Now, I started with c to be a vector orthogonal to the columns of b 1 in place of that suppose I write here b 2 here. Then this statement will change here, here I will get c prime mu 2 and here I will get b 2 z 2. So, this will become c prime mu 2 and here then I can write c prime mu 1 plus c prime b 1 z 1. In that case I will get the same statement in the reverse way. So, repeating the argument with an interchange in B 1 and B 2, we get orthogonal space of 
B2 is a subspace of orthogonal space of B1. So, that means they are same basically column space of B1 and column space of B2 are same. This means that there exists a non singular matrix Q such that B1 is equal to B2 Q. So, I have written here if m is equal to p then I am able to write that B 1 is equal to B 2 q and if m is less than p then also I am able to obtain a non singular matrix q such that B 1 is equal to B 2 q. So, this 1 and 2 give that all the time there will be a non singular matrix. Thus, there always exists a non singular matrix q such that b1 is equal to b2 q now we make use of this so let us write say y minus mu2 that is equal to b2 z2 so this implies b2 prime b2 inverse b2 prime y minus mu2 that is equal to b2 prime b2 inverse b2 prime b2 z2 that is equal to z2. So, if I consider now y minus mu 1 that is equal to b1 z1 that is equal to b2 q z1 this implies that b2 prime b2 prime b2 prime b2 inverse b2 prime y minus mu 1 that will be equal to q z 1. So, what we are getting is that z 1 z 2 and q z 1 they have the same distribution except for a location change because both I am able to represent in terms of see this is y minus mu 2. So, mu 2 is the translation here and here I am getting q z 1 that is y minus mu 1 here. So, components of q z 1 they are independent. Now, the condition that no columns of B 1 is a multiple of columns of B 2, then this implies that every column of Q contains at least two non zero elements. So, by Darmois Skitovic theorem then we conclude that Z i is follows normal n 1 i is equal to 1 to m. So, now z 1 is equal to your components of this let us call it say z 1 1 z 1 2 z 1 m. So, what you are getting here is that y follows n p. Uh, now, we go to so these are the three characterizations. Now, we move over to the actual density function. If you remember here, uh, in the case of one dimensional and two dimensional distributions, we always define a distribution and we talk about its probability mass function and the probability density function. In the case of p dimensional normal distribution, I have not yet actually defined the density function. So, one major reason is that when we talk about higher dimensions and uh, 
if there is a for example here i am mentioning sigma as a variance covariance matrix is positive semi definite so if it's a positive definite matrix then it will have full rank but if it is not a full rank that means the rank is say p minus 1 or p minus 2 or in general i am saying m m is less than p <coughs> that means there will be some linear relationships among the variables there if there are complete relationships there in that case the density will exist on a subspace it will not exist on the full space that is in on p dimensional space so that is the reason that uh, i gave the definition of a multivariate normal distribution in terms of its linear combinations and then in terms of an alternative representation like mu plus bz where uh, z is a collection of m independent univariate normal random variables so there m was the rank so that means i am able to actually define in terms of a uh, alternative you can say characterization of the multivariate distribution i don't necessarily have to write the density function but now I will write the density function for the full space. That means, when I consider the full rank, then we talk about the density function. And actually, the representation that I have given, it will be ex exactly used for deriving the density function. So, we talk about probability density function of a multivariate normal distribution so let us consider x following n p mu sigma and i consider full rank rank of sigma is equal to say p if rank of sigma is equal to p then we can write x is equal to mu plus b z where b is p by p and z is a vector of independent these are i i d normal 0 1. So, if that is happening and also this b b prime is equal to sigma and this z is equal to actually b inverse x minus mu. Now, if I have independent normal random variables, I can write down the density function. So, the joint p d f of z is equal to this z1 z2 zp so z prime is equal to z1 z2 zp that is nothing but let me use a notation f z so that is equal to 1 by 2 pi to the power p by 2 e to the power minus 1 by 2 sigma z i square so that will be equal to 1 by 2 pi to the power p by 2 e to the power minus half z prime z uh, let me use capital letters here usually we write uh, small letters for denoting the value of the random variable but here for the sake of convenience i am using the capital letters here now this z is given in terms of this so we write it here that is equal to 1 by 2 pi to the power p by 2 e to the power minus half now z is equal to this term here so it is becoming x minus mu prime b inverse prime b inverse x minus mu. Now, if I am assuming this b b prime is equal to sigma, then sigma inverse is equal to b prime b b prime inverse that is equal to b prime inverse b inverse that will be equal to b inverse prime b inverse. So, we can use this. So, this is simply becoming 1 by 2 pi to the power p by 2 e to the power minus 1 by 2 x minus mu prime sigma inverse x minus mu. Now, if I am obtaining the distribution of x from here, then I have to calculate the 
Jacobian here. So, what will be the Jacobian term here? In order to obtain the density of x from the density of z, we calculate the Jacobian of transformation. that is z is equal to b inverse x minus mu. So, that is given by determinant of b inverse which is same as determinant of b inverse which is also the determinant of sigma to the power minus half. So, the p d f of x is given by that is equal to 1 by 2 pi to the power p by 2 determinant of sigma to the power half e to the power minus 1 by 2 x minus mu prime sigma inverse x minus mu. Here x belongs to r p mu belongs to r p and sigma is positive definite matrix sigma is r p by p that is p by p positive definite matrix. when rank of sigma is less than p then the multivariate normal distribution is called a singular distribution and the density function is defined on a subspace. Suppose B that is P by K is a matrix of orthogonal column vectors belonging to column space of sigma and N that is P by P minus K B of rank say p minus k such that n prime sigma is null matrix. So, let us consider the transformation u prime is equal to u prime going to x z prime where x is b prime u z is equal to n prime u. then expectation of z is equal to n prime mu dispersion matrix of z is equal to n prime sigma n that is becoming null. That means, z is equal to n prime mu with probability 1 that is degeneracy here and expectation of x is equal to b prime mu dispersion matrix of x is equal to b prime sigma b. So, x follows n k b prime mu b prime sigma b. So, we can write actually b prime sigma b can be written as the product of the product of non zero eigenvalues of sigma. So, b prime sigma b is non singular. So, 
So, x will have density one by two pi to the power k by t b prime sigma b to the power half e to the power minus one by two x minus b prime mu b prime sigma b to the power minus one x minus b prime mu. So, this description 1 and 2 that describes the density. If you consider say x minus b prime mu b prime sigma b inverse x minus b prime mu then that is u minus mu b b prime sigma b inverse b prime u minus mu that is equal to u minus mu a generalized inverse of this u minus mu for some choice of sigma g inverse. So, the density is actually 1 by 2 pi to the power k by 2 product of the determinant and the eigen values i is equal to 1 to k e to the power minus so this is actually a density on a subspace it's not the density on the full space when the rank of sigma is not full now before going to the uh, estimation let us consider one or two applications of this conditional distributions or linear combinations etcetera. One example of a multivariate normal distribution let me write here. So, let us consider say mu is equal to 4, 3, 2, 1 and I consider sigma as 3 0 2 2 0 1 1 0 2 1 9 minus 2 2 0 minus 2 4. So, let us take say x following n 4 mu sigma. Let us consider some partitioning of this say it is equal to x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4 which I am actually writing as say x 1 and x 2. Okay. That is this is two dimensional and this is two dimensional here. Let us define say conditional distribution of conditional distribution of say x 2 given x 1 is equal to say 3 2. Now, we have discussed the conditional distribution of one component given the second component. So, this will follow n 2 and if I consider the corresponding decomposition of mu as say mu 1 and mu 2 then this will become mu 2 plus sigma 2 1. So, I am partitioning this as sigma 1 1, sigma 1 2, sigma 2 1, sigma 2 2. So, if I consider this, then this term is sigma 1 1, this is sigma 1 2, this is sigma 2 1 and this is sigma 2 2. So, this will become So, let us calculate these terms here. So, this one is now 2 1 plus sigma 2 1 is this term here 2 1 2 0 
sigma 1 1 inverse is the inverse of this that is 1 by 3 1 0 0 and then you have x 1 minus mu 1. So, 3 2 minus mu 1. So, that will become minus 1 minus 1 and here I will get 9 minus 2 minus 2 4 minus sigma 2 1 that is 2 1 2 0 sigma 1 1 inverse into sigma 1 2 that is 2 2 1 0 that is the dispersion term here. So, I will get here x 2 given x 1 is equal to 3 2 as n 2 17 by 3 11 by 3 20 by 3 minus 10 by 3 minus 10 by 3 8 by 3. So, I am able to obtain the conditional distribution of x 2 given x 1 is equal to a certain number here. So, this is quite interesting here we can obtain and you can actually look at this this is 4 3 2 1 and here you see x 2 given some value of x 1. So, here you can see that there is a dramatic change here this is uh, 17 by 3 which is bigger than 5 itself this is around 4 and whereas, the original means of x 2 was only 2 1. So, if x 1 is given 3 2 then it has increased the means of uh, x 2 and similarly, there is a substantial change in the value of the variance covariance terms here. Let us also define in this same a is equal to say 1 2 and let us consider say b is equal to 1 minus 2 2 minus 1. What is the distribution of say a x 1? So, according to this a x 1 will have normal with mean. So, a mu 1 because a is a scalar here uh, a is a row vector here. So, this will become a scalar and then you will have a sigma 1 1 a transpose. So, you can calculate this this value is simply 10 and this is 7. Similarly, suppose I consider b x 2. So, b x 2 is actually equal to a two dimensional vector here that is following normal with b mu 2 b sigma 2 2 b transpose. So, if we can calculate this, this turns out to be 0 3 33 16 36 32. Let us also consider say covariance between a x 1 and b x 2. Then this will become equal to a sigma 1 to b transpose. So, that is equal to 0 6. So, in this example I have shown you a direct application of the distribution theory of the multivariate normal distribution and uh, various things were considered here. Let me give one more exercise here. Let us consider say sigma is equal to 4 1 2 1 9 minus 3 2 minus 3 25. Okay. So, here I consider rho as say 1 1 1 and here I will consider correlation between. So, this is actually correlation matrix correlation matrix of x. Okay. So, that means, these term will be denoting correlation between x 1 x 2 not covariance it is correlation terms here. So,
consider find v half where this is diagonals are standard deviations and find rho and also show that v half rho v half is equal to sigma for this particular case. See this is an interesting thing because you can do the manipulation with the variance covariance matrix because of the uh, positive semi definiteness of the matrix. This is very important because uh, it has a spectral decomposition, you can have a gram decomposition in as B, B transpose etcetera. So, a lot of nice properties are coming here. Let us consider. So, V half here will become equal to 2, 3, 5 that is the standard deviation matrix here. Let us consider V minus half. So, that will be 1 by 2, 1 by 3, 1 by 5, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 and rho is equal to v to the power minus half sigma v to the power minus half that is equal to 1, 1 by 6, 1 by 5, 1 by 6, 1 minus 1 by 5, 1 by 5, minus 1 by 5 and 1. I mentioned about the uniqueness of the uh, sigma 2 1 sigma 1 1 inverse term actually. So, see there is a problem suppose we are calculating the inverses then sometimes the inverses will not exist uh, or with a little variation the inverse may vary too much. So, that means it is an example of a unstable matrix. Let us take one case here at least. Let me give example of one such problem here. Let us take say A is equal to 4, 4 0.001, 0 0.001, 4 0.002 and B is equal to say 4, 4 0.001, 0 0.001, 0 0.002001. 0 0 you can see here that in A and B three terms are exactly the same. The fourth term I have modified only by adding point 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, Okay, Only that much difference is there. Let us look at say A inverse. A inverse is equal to minus 10 to the power 6, 4.002 minus 4.001 minus 4.001, 4. And if I look at B inverse, then that is equal to 10 to the power 6 by 3, 4.002001 minus 4.001 minus 4.001 and 4. So, you can see that there is a dramatic change in the value here. Actually, determinant of A is turning out to be minus 10 to the power minus 6, whereas determinant of B is equal to 3 into 10 to the power minus 6. So, there is substantial change in the value. So, we are getting that A inverse is approximately minus 3 B inverse. If you look at A and B, there is hardly any difference here. In fact, the three terms are exactly the same in the fourth term. I am considering the change after 5 decimal places. In the 6 decimal place, there is a minor change by 0 0.00001. But if you look at the inverses here, A is almost same as B, but if you look at the inverse, so then you are getting substantial change. So, this is an example of unstable system. The reason is that if I look at this, that they are almost linearly dependent here. See A, if you look at this is dependent. So, this is almost dependent here because there is a small change. In that case, a small change in the value of one term makes a huge change in the value of B inverse. Uh, in the next class, I will be talking about the estimation of the parameters of a multivariate normal distribution. Uh, we will also discuss the non-central 
chi square distribution etc because that concept is coming here and it will be also used in finding out the distributions of the statistics there. So, that I will be taking up in the next.